this is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet everyone today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What a day, what a time, what a name. Amen. And we have taken the name. We have became, become part of the name. Why? Because there, there's been a marriage. And when the two are married, the wife, of course, takes the husband's name. And so uh, that's what's happened. That's what's happened this day, of course. Uh, the world and the religious world, they know nothing about it. Uh, one could care less, the world could care less, and the religious world, if they even believe it, uh, it's something way off in the future for them. But for those of us that do believe, that have caught the revelation of the hour and what has happened in our day, it's a great time, it's a great day. So, and we thank the Lord that He's put something in us so that we can actually see, not so much see with our eyes, but understand by way of the Holy Spirit what God has been doing and what He has done. And so, uh, that's that's what we're here for, to to tell what has been done, and so everybody's looking for everything. Somebody asked me a question: well, What all these things you preach about the only and even Christ and this and that? He said, uh, "Can you can you draw it out? Can you <laughs> give us some quotes?" I said, "I said yes, I can. It, yes, it is. We're we're here. That's happened." And it, and it is, and it's all in Christ. There's none of these things outside of Christ. You won't find these things outside of Christ. So it's all in Christ, and when you get in Christ, you're, you're a part of it. You're not a spectator anymore. You're the one, you're part of it. You're fulfilling your part of the Word. Amen. So, uh, and it, they can't understand it. It's, evident, it's, just, it's just not for them. So if you can, praise God, you're, you're in and you thank the Lord that He, he put you in. You didn't put yourself in. If you're in, it's in, you're in because of Him, that He foreknew you and knew what you would do and everything about you before He ever put you in. So we thank the Lord that He did put us in. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again. Thank you for the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank what you've done all down through the ages. Lord, while you was letting your word, letting it out, letting it out, and Lord, all of a sudden, boom, you come on the scene. The complete revelation of Jesus Christ. The word being fulfilled, being manifested, being revealed to a people upon the face of the earth. And Lord, we believe that you've done it, and we're here to tell about it, Lord. So we thank you that you give us the encouragement by the Holy Spirit, Lord, to talk, to testify of the great things that the Lord Jesus has done. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise. We thank you that we're part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. So today, to take a little subject, <clears throat> I want to call this, the last member has been redeemed. The last member has been redeemed. And so I want to start with the scripture there in uh, Revelations uh, 5, starting with verse 5 and coming down a few verses here. Now, Revelations 5 is a very pivotal scripture because Brother Brown started to talk about Revelations uh, chapter 5 when he preached the message of the breach between the seven church ages and the seven seals. And so he really keyed in on this because that was the happening. And so, <clears throat> and we're not reading, when we're reading Revelation chapter 5, we're not reading future. We're reading something that has happened. Because if you believe 
The seven seals have been revealed. Well, this is the place where they was actually loosed at, so the prophet could actually preach them. And we know that he did, and he said the seven seals had, had been preached. So, think about that as we read this, that is not future, it's something that has happened. Revelations 5 and 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold the line of the tribe of Judah. And, and we got to remember that the book of Revelation is a book of symbols, so we know who the line of the tribe of Judah is. It's Jesus Christ, the root of David. And he has prevailed. Yes, he did prevail. He overcome. To what? To open the book. So now he's going to open this book. And we find over in Revelation 10, 2, that the mighty angel come down with that open book. Well, he was coming down with the book that had been opened over here in Revelation chapter 5. And, tying this together, to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. That's a symbol of who? Christ. As it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came. Now, I know they don't they like to even read that because they're looking for him to came later on. But he, the Bible said, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he, who? The Lamb, Christ. And when he had taken the book, four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And this whole thing is being tied together now. And the conjunction. And they. Well, my goodness. Who is this they? We're going to find out. And they sang, or they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and had redeemed, E.D., past tense, us to God by thy blood out of every kindred tongue and nation, people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And somebody asked, and I'm so glad they did because Brother Branham answered it. It took him a while to get around the answer, but he did answer it. And in question and answers on the seals, somebody asked the question. It said, in Revelations verses 5 to 9, who are these found singing when the Lamb takes a book out of, takes a book? Are, oh, are these the raptured saints? So the question is, is right where we were reading there about those ones singing after he had taken the book, and he said, are these the raptured saints? Well, that, to me, that was a, a very, very interesting question because somebody was seeing something even back in 1963. And Brother Brown answers this question in question and answers on the seals here on paragraph 271. You want to go read it for yourself. That's right. Now, what do you think about the, the presence of the Holy Spirit? If, if he isn't here, what is? He wouldn't let. See, I only read the first part of that verse. And I was something wrote here and I was trying to get through looking at the clock. But you see... Him stopped me on that glory. I never read the other part of it, see? God here, look here. And they sang a new song, and I stopped, see? But look here. The song that they sang saying, You have redeemed us out of every kindred, tongue, and nation 
sure that's them. That's them who? Who was the question asked about? Are these the raptured saints? And he said, sure, that's them. So in Revelation chapter 5, we were raptured. We were raptured and we were singing according to what the Bible says, according to what the prophet says. So you can go and argue whatever you want to with whoever you want to. It's not going to change what the Bible said. It's not going to change what he said. And remember, these seals, the Holy Spirit was in charge. It was so much in charge that it wouldn't let him answer this the wrong way. Even though he was in a hurry and trying to get through, it brought him back to make it correct. Who are, he said, sure it's them, the raptured saints. So, and people, they can go on and they can, but this, this is going to be the truth and it's the eternal truth. Amen. So, now we're talking about the last member has been redeemed. Well, hello. That was it right there. What? He took the book. What was the book? It was a book of redemption. It was a book of life. There's only one book. There's not a half a dozen books two or three books, there's one book. And everybody that was going to be redeemed was written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. That's just as simple as you could put it if you believe the Bible. Amen. And I begin to wonder about that. Yeah, I believe people believe it with their own interpretation. And they have really, they've got off the Word because they're trying to support something that was never part of it. Now, I want to go to this message, souls that are in prison now, and Brother Branham makes <clears throat> another statement here. And he starts off, he said, not by speaking in tongues. Well, some people believe that. Not by dancing in the Spirit, not by joining church, not by the fruit of the Spirit. He says Christian science can outsmother you on that, see, and even deny Jesus Christ was divine. Not that, but it's the Word living. There it is. If you had only looked, He was Messiah. He was the living Word made manifest. And a man that's got the Spirit of God in him, or a woman, lives that word. It lives right out in them. So what? You're supposed to be the living word. Well, how can you be the, the living word when you're denying it? That's already been done. So, he said, that's the heartbeat, the predestinated for the word of the Lord comes to them. Comes to them who? The predestinated. That's the only ones it can come to. Amen. For the word lives out in them. The word of the Lord comes to them. And they are the word to the people. How about that people? You're the word to the people. You. Your life, what you say, what you do, is the word to the people. And we should live a, God, a godly, pure life before the people. Amen? I was reading in the book of Titus last night. And Paul, he's, he's, he's talking to these younger preachers. And he's telling them how they should behave themselves. And not only in church, but it's everything you do. When you go to work, when you work for somebody and you're drawing your pay, you want to do the best job you can, not some sloth off, not hide in the closet or whatever, or spend your day in the bathroom on your phone. You're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be worthy of the name. But people have forgot all about that now. Look here, if the man pays you, you give him what he's paying you for, or you leave. It's just that simple. You know, if you people would read these things, and what? Not let them go in one eye and out the other, but if they would read them and put them in practice. That's where it has to be. 
Not something you read. It's something you read and you follow the instructions and you do it. It'd be a lot different world. Huh. Okay, there are the word to the people. Written epistles, read of all men. Is that right? Could the third pool be on? This is 1963. This is 2024. Amen, Brother Branham. The third pool is on because he told us what the third pool was. It was the opening of the word. The mysteries revealed. Amen. That's what his ministry was all about. He says, take people. You listen to this tape. I wish you could see the congregation because he had what? He had put them over the flame of the fire. He was talking about the people being eternal doomed could never be saved. And look at here, when you get of that inspiration and you get there, it makes you think, well, where am I at in this thing? Uh-huh. I hope you're feeling the same way. What is it? Look at the scriptures filed in here. Could it be? Is the third pool to preach to the eternal doomed? Is the third pool? Well, yes it is. It has two parts. It's to the, the, to the eternal people, eternal life, and it's to the eternal doom because one accepts it and the other rejects it. That's just as simple as you know how to put it. That's rejected the message of salvation. Well, you say the church is going, yeah, they will. They'll go right on. They have just the same. More churches, more members, uh-huh. But remember, all this time, Noah was in the ark. Well, once, once Noah got in the ark, God closed the door. There wasn't nobody else getting on board. It was over. They had, they had what, sinned away their day by calling Noah all the names. And he had the truth, and they thought he was in some kind of a nutcase. So Noah was in, now listen, the bride is sealed in with Christ. The last member has been redeemed. The sixth seal has produced it. The seventh seal brings him back to earth. And people read this and they think, well, you know, he's, 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 it says right here, the seventh seal brings, because the seventh seal was the coming of the Lord. There was silence in heaven. Nobody knew. But it was the coming of the Lord. And so they think, well, he, well, it says here, he's going to come back to earth. He's come back to this earth. This is the earth that he's come back to. This is his body that he's working through. Me and you and every other believer that their name is on the book. Hmm. So now... <clears throat> The seventh seal brings him back to earth. The Lamb came and took the book. When, well, what's he talking about? Revelation chapter 5 again. The Lamb came and took the book out of the right hand of the net and sat down and claimed what he owned, what he had redeemed. Okay? You say, well, he redeemed them at the cross. Amen. But there was nobody that he could take right then. He had to go through the seven church ages and did. And this here is after that. And so he's claimed. Now he's not only redeemed them, he has claimed them. Why? Because he took the book. What book? The book of redemption. And claimed what he on what he had redeemed. That's right. It's always been that third pool. Three is perfection. Listen, the ministry come to its perfection when it reproduced Christ again in natural. Reproduce well, what is Christ? He's the word. Well, that's what this was what was brought back. The complete full word of revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it was made just the way God wanted it to do because he said in the day when the Son of Man is being revealed, Son of Man is prophet. There was a prophet on the scene. The word comes to the prophet. Well, Christ is the word. Amen. And he come to him and he give it out. So he said, 
and had all the identifications of it. The Messiah sign and everything else. But people, well, okay. It don't mean anything to them. It, 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 it can't mean anything to them. When it reproduced Christ again in the natural among human beings as was predicted as in the days of Lot. Lot, amen. The Son of Man being revealed again. Oh, thank. People could go right on preaching, thinking they're getting saved, believing they're doing right, believing their organization is growing, and not even a ray of hope. Your name is not on the book. There ain't much. Uh -uh. Not even a ray of hope. If that vision was, and it's been so hard against women, we have to come back to that hour. The door is closed, gone already. The book is in his hand. Think of it. And all of these little sayings there, he keeps pointing back to Revelations chapter 5. The book is already in his hand. Well, the, the book had to be in his hand, had to loose the seals before he could give them to the prophet for the prophet to preach in 1963. So when did all these things happen? Two plus two. Amen. Now, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Then, our headship is the kingdom. The kingdom of God is within you, the Bible, said the Bible. <clears throat> Jesus, the kingdom, we are not a denomination. We belong to a kingdom. And the kingdom is the word of God made spirit in life in your own life. So if you have the kingdom, you have the spirit and the word. And it's made what? In you. You become part of it. Bringing to pass every promise in this day, as it did in that day when the word and, and when the word in God was one, and the word in God is one in His church today, making the headship uh, of the body that is redeemed. So He's got a headship. To have the headship, He had to have a body for it to come to. And the body has been redeemed. To bring the message in the last day and be taken up from the dead in the resurrection to go back and restore again as Adam and Eve in the beginning in the Garden of Eden, the threefold mystery of God, His body. Oh my. Look here. Everything that Adam and Eve lost when He come and took the book has been redeemed. Everything. And we'll get into some of that. Still in this Christ, the mystery. He said, that's it. Christ, the Word. He was the Word. He is the Word. And the church becomes the Word by taking Him, by making her a part of Him. That's the, that's the Word again. Personally identified by Him. His property alone. His property alone. She is redeemed by Him. That's why she becomes a wife. He redeemed her. He come to get her. And they become one. Because why? She's just part of him. She is redeemed by him, through him, for him, and for him alone. Look at that. There ain't no church, no denomination, nothing else. It's all about Christ. Is that it? For him alone. That's right. Then, what is the devil howling about? That's, it's being revealed. Yeah, that's what he's howling about. The, the revelation of Jesus Christ is coming forth, and he's been, the mask has been taken off, the cloak has been taken off of him. He's been hiding in the church. Well, he's still hid there this morning. What? Well, because he's preaching his doctrine. He started right in the Garden of Eden with his doctrine. And what did it? They fell for it then, and they're still falling for it this morning. Look here, it don't have to be much. One word started all this. Well, you think you're going to get back by missing a word? No, it's every word. Sirs, we would see Jesus there in New York. What was it? 
There was the Bible said in, in the book of Revelation in the last days when the Antichrist raised on the scene so close like the real thing. Well, where do you think the Antichrist is this morning? You think he's in the Baptist? He's already got them. All the other denominations, the Pentecost of the whole, yeah, he took them over. Well, where do you think he's working today? Where does he always go? Did went back in when Jesus was here, did he go to Caiaphasis and try to deceive him? He already had him deceived. He went right to Christ and said, If thou be the Son of God, you know, right up in his face that Jesus didn't play with him. He said, It is also written. See, you not you got to know where you're at and where you're standing. So He's deceiving, and that's his job, is to deceive. He does, look here, the devil does a separation because he comes along with his gospel, and what happens? They follow him. Broad is the way that lead to destruction, and straight and narrow is the way that leads to life. Amen. So it said now, <clears throat> it'd be so close like the real thing. It would deceive the very elected if it was, it's, look here, it must be real good. He said it was deceive the very elected if possible. But then he said, <clears throat> he deceived, <clears throat> he deceived all upon the earth whose names were not written. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, my voice is cracking. He, re <clears throat> he received all whose names were not written on the Lamb's book of life slain before the foundation of the world. See? Their names were put on the book of life. The book of redemption. There he says they're one and the same. The book of life and the book of redemption is the same book because that's the one that gets redeemed. Jesus come to redeem those, those who, that had their name on the book. And when the last name is redeemed, the Lamb takes the book. Oh, well, hello, we done read where he took the book. When the last name is redeemed, the Lamb takes the book and walks away. That's all. Redemption is over. People say, oh my goodness. Look at here. You got to know, you got to know who you are. You got to know that you were with him before the foundation of the world, before we ever got here. Your name was put on the Lamb's book of life and there is nothing that can take it off. Amen. If you are of that elect. And if you can't believe you are, well, uh, you're probably not. Because it has to be somebody has to believe this. Not just say, oh, oh my, oh me. Now, go away from Jesus there in Shreveport. I've always thought that the church what, what wasn't a haphazard. I, I, I knew about that. We use it in the oil and you know, they kind of do things like a haphazard way. But I looked that thing up in the, in the dictionary this morning. And haphazard is a chance. It's unplanned. It's random. It's hit or miss. Now, let's read it now with that. It's a chance. It's something that's unplanned. It's a hit or miss. Well, you know, it's like throwing something against the wall. And well, whenever it sticks. But that's not the way God runs his show. But people would think so. So he said, I've always thought the church was a hat. Jesus never came to the earth in a haphazard way. He didn't come by chance. He come by a plan. It was prophesied everything about what even how he would be born. So he never came in a haphazard way. He never died in a haphazard way. It was already been prophesied. 
all through the Old Testament, just how he would die. And he come for a purpose. And that purpose was to fulfill the commandment of God, that he might purchase to himself a church without spot or wrinkle. The church is a predestinated church. Every name that was ever put on that book, Jesus came to redeem. And when that last name is redeemed, the book is closed. Well, it's been done. Now, and it's closed. Well, you people say, well, if it's closed, how am I going to get in? You were already in. I, I just can't imagine somebody reading this and thinking that they're closed. Well, are you thinking you're closed? You probably are closed. Because you should have the revelation of Jesus Christ that He come for you, the individual you. Not somebody else. He come for you. This is a personal thing. So the book is closed. Now, He didn't intend that no one would be lost. That wasn't the plan. But... By his foreknowledge, let him know who would be lost. Now, foreknowledge, he looked all the way down. Amen. Therefore, he could predestinate, and then their names were put on the book before the foundation of the world. And then when the book of redemption is closed and sealed with seven seals while it's being worked out by the mysterious powers of God and someday when the book of redemption is finished, the Lamb takes it. Well, we don't read. In Revelations 5, He took it. Then He come down in Revelations 10 with an open book to give it to the seventh angel for Him to give out. So the lamb takes it. Then the last name is called off of that lamb. The lamb comes forward to call for what he has redeemed. His church, and I believe that time is close at hand. 1963, well, what would you think about 2024? What, 60 years later? Well, if he don't come today, he'll be coming tomorrow, and then the next day, and the next day. It's just like 2,000 years ago. Jesus come every way he was supposed to come. He done everything he was supposed to do. And the, the people were so blind they could not see. But look, at there was a little group. There was one here or there. Amen. That recognized. And when their eyes were open, they knew him. Amen. If you could only get your eyes open. And he's the only one that can open them. This is in Beaumont. He said, as I said last evening, God has allotted that his scripture from the beginning. But before, that, but before there was any time when he was eternal, he is the eternal one. And then these things that's happening now, now this, this was in 1964, so these things he said that are, well, what are the things that are happening now in our day? If it's, if it's part of God, it is the same thing. So these things that are happening now are only the attribute of God's thinking. At first, it had to be a thought and then a word. And a word, when, it, when, is it, when a thought expressed, it is a word. Then, it's spoken. It has to happen. Look here, when God speaks something, just forget about it. It's going to happen. And the whole thing, the whole thing, is God unfolding himself in his attributes and then God being made material tangible that we can talk speak with the whole church body and everything so God has been made tangible what in us me and you we are the body oh yeah 
And they're waiting for, they're waiting for the body of 2,000 years ago to drop out of the sky. When we are the body. Therefore, your name was in his thinking. Now, how about that? Your name, if it's on the book, was in his thinking. That's how you have eternal life. Your name was in his thinking. That's how you have eternal life. Boy, isn't that simple? Huh. You can't have it no other way. If you got eternal life, you always was. Well, what you got to worry about? Look here, if the people couldn't really get a hold of this and believe this, my goodness, you talk about an invincible army. What? There's no fear. You can't die. You got eternal life. When God says move, you just move. Amen. Oh my! If you got eternal life, you always will. See, if 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 you if otherwise, you can't say, "Well, I belong to church. I do this," and that's about where people are. Oh, I belong to church, and I do this. No, sir. Eternal life never had a what a beginning. Anything that never did begin and cannot end. That's eternal life. You never begin and you can't end. So what are you worried about? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. There's a lot of unbelief that goes with this. Because what? This, this, this to believe this is a paradox. It's something that's true, but it just seems like there's no way it could be. But it is. And it's God's truth. It's Him. And look here, you've got to be part of it to believe it. You just can't, well, I'll just make myself. No, you won't. So now, let's see. So, you so you were only in his thinking and your name who you are and what you are that's the only way you could have eternal life called you always was and those no matter what they are they are eternally dead dead from the beginning The Bible said, the woman that lives in pleasure, boy, there's a bunch of them, and oh my, especially in this day. The woman that lives in pleasure is dead while she is alive, right? See, she's always been dead. She's dead in sin and trespasses. How about that? How about being dead while you're alive? Because you're, you're alive only as a member of this society. And look here, we were in the same shape. Paul said it there in Ephesians 2, you, that we were dead in sin and trespass, but we have been quickened. Why? What happened to us? Why were we quickened? Because our name was put on the Lamb's book of life. There was something that when we got here that could be quickened. Brother Brown made it so simple. He said, he said, you know, the, that old rock lays out in the sun and it says, oh, it's so hot, so hot. And he says, that little seed lay there under the earth is said, oh, that's what I've been looking for. Because why? There was nothing in that rock that could be quickened. Look here, there's got to be something there to be quick. And if it is, it was put in there before the foundation of the world when your name put on the book. That's just as simple. If you, if you grasp that, that's, that's the whole thing right there. You don't have to go no further. Just say, glory to God, I'm part of it. Amen. So, and now, if you were in the quickening... At the beginning, <laughs> amen, Brother Brown. Quickening, he's seen you quicken. He's seen all of these things. God, God is 
What is it? Omnipotent. He's all power. Omniscient. All knowing. He's not having a new thought. He's not learning something today because you think he is. Oh, my. And now you were in the quickening at his beginning. That's what he come to redeem. And your name was put on the Lamb's Book of Life in his thinking. Not a, there wasn't some book somewhere that he would write. This was all in the mind of God. Yeah, man, he don't lose a thought. He don't get old. He don't get dementia. He don't get Alzheimer's. He's just as, just as good today as he ever was and ever will be. He's not like us down here. And he came and he come to redeem all the names that's in the book. No more. He said, not one more. Just what was in there. When the last name is redeemed, then he takes the book. Well, back to chapter 5 again, Revelation. He takes the book and claims what he has redeemed. Now, and what a strange thing it would be, would be if he couldn't believe all inspired, every bit of it, and as we believe every bit of it. And that's what it takes. You've got to believe every bit of it. Well, I don't know about it. And there's a lot of people, well, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of people can't even believe in the virgin birth. Oh, they say, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because God, the Creator, created him a body. He created the sperm and the egg and placed it in a virgin. And she come full term and had a son. And that was his body. And he come down and got in that body and lived in it. Now he's done the same thing. He's come down. He's built him another body. It took seven church ages to do it. But he's come down and he's got it. And he's living in it today. And that's what the people... Oh, us, us foul people, that God could actually come and live in us. Hey, amen, He did. He's paid the price. There's nothing held against you if you're part of this. When He redeemed you, He cleansed everything. Now, let's see, where are we at here? Oh yeah, Jehovah Jireh 3, there in... Uh, Louisville, 1964. He said, what will take place one of these days? They're going to say, now, you know, uh, here we are over in, in the tribulation period. And I thought the church was to be raptured before the tribulation. But praise God, we were. We were raptured all the way back in Revelation 5. Amen. Thought the church was to be raptured. That's what they're still thinking. Ooh, I think the church is going to be... It gets so bad one day, you're going to snatch us out of here. Uh-huh. Yep. Now, let's see. The church was to be raptured up before the... Uh, that's the truth. Not the church. The bride. The church goes through the tribulation period, but not the bride. No, sir. She is redeemed. Goodness. Tell me again, Brother Brown. She is redeemed. If you're part of her, you've been redeemed. You don't go through no <coughs> tribulation. She has nothing to be purified by. She is already pure. The Holy Spirit has come into her and purified her and took away all the filth and gum of the world. Amen. Did that, did that happen to you? took away all the filth and gum of the world. She believes that word and become part of it. Amen. That's her identification. That's right. Without the Holy Spirit, nothing doing. It's the bride comes out of the church and there she's, that's called the remnant of the woman's seed, is left to go through the tribulation. Huh? Somebody's going to go through it. Amen. Tribulation. And oh, they got this tribulation. Oh, this going to be. There's going to be seven years of it, and it's going to do this and going to do that. My, my, my. Well, if they miss Christ, how, how, 
what else have they missed? When you miss the main point, what difference about the rest of it? Now, the future home of the heavenly bridegroom and the earthly bride, 1964. And look, you are part of that ground, is that right? And when he redeemed you, he redeemed the earth with the same thing. And you are together again. How much plainer can it be, see? You have been redeemed because you're part of it. And if the blood didn't drop on you, you ain't redeemed yet. You're not called. Then he cleanses it the same way, same thing that he does in the fire. Even the blood dropped. He said, yet it's got to be cleansed by fire. That's right, for the dwelling place of God. Amen. So what's he talking about? Well, we know how he cleaned justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. That's how he claimed this. And, and by doing that, it's been redeemed. Well, he said he's going to redeem the earth. And so it has got to do the same thing. It was baptized in Noah. Jesus dropped his blood upon it and sanctified it. And when we get out of here, there's going to be a holy fire. It's going to burn every, everything contrary to God. It's going to be gone. This thing is going to melt with fervent heat. This, this old earth is going to melt and it's going to be remolded back into his Eden condition and it's going to go way up thousands of thousands of miles up in the air and all these Sputniks and satellites and everything that's producing all this stuff is going to go they're going to be annihilated just like they never were because they're not part of God they're not part of his plan that's man's plan down here amen but oh no the people think, oh, this is going to go on and on. Well, it has went on and on. And why is it gone? Because it's to fulfill God's Word. Like I say, it wasn't haphazard. This was a planned thing. And God had the plan in His mind before the foundation of the world. Now, let's finish up this. He said, the kingdom of God is in the earth now. in the hearts of the saints. So, you want to know where the kingdom of God is? It's in the heart of the saints. This kingdom of God that we're talking about, it's not a natural thing. It's a spiritual thing. In his, and it's His attributes that He, that he began in the beginning. Now His attributes is redeemed is redeemed. He said, what he's waiting to redeem the earth, to set his attributes on it, to fulfill exactly his predestinated plan. Do you see it? So that's the only thing that's holding us up. It's for the word to be fulfilled, to be completed. And then what? He's going to take this earth because the meek, the Bible says, the meek shall inherit the earth. Look here, we're going to come back and live on this thing. My, won't it be good? They, look here, there won't be none of this stuff here. We won't have to worry about getting run over by a car. Or any devil messing with you. No planes flying overhead and crashing. No, no, no there won't be none of that over there. It'll be perfect, God's perfect place. Amen now. Let's close with this little question here. On question and answers there in 1964, number two. And if standing in line to get into church is going to be only a memory, what's going to happen if we are not going through the tribulation and we are to be saying some suffering if we're not to see this question probably uh, this question is probably this I'm trying to hurry I don't not do this blah 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 I'm gonna come back okay it's the hour just tear it down I'll stop look the people are wanting to say that thinking that the church is going to hit the tribulation see 
And, and this was on people's mind because it had been preached so much about there was a seven-year tribulation and blah, 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 and all about it. So, and if they think, well, the church is going through it, but he, he's going to tell them, that, like he always had, the church goes through it, but not the bride. If you could just believe that. Okay, now, let's see. And the people's wanting to say, thinking the church is going to hit the tribulation. See, it won't, it can't, because it's already redeemed. Well, if you're redeemed, that means you've been purified. You ain't got one thing to go through a tribulation for. He said, now, the church, the nominal believers like Lot, he's going through the tribulation period, see? And be saved as it were by fire. Noah went through the tribulation period, carried above it, and come out with Ham, who polluted the earth again. So if you want to know who done the polluting after Noah got out, Ham. What did he have? He had a Cush, and he had a Canaan, amen, and on and on and on. And the, well, the sons of Son, sons of God, saw the daughters of man and took unto them women wives. Yeah, they're in Genesis 6, and then the whole thing started over. Yeah. So now, let's see where we at here. Okay. Now Lot came out with his own daughters and slept with him, and they had children. He had children by his own daughter. Remember that? He had a, two, two sons over there. He had a Ammon, that produced the Ammonites, which was God's enemy. And he had a Moab, and that's the one that hired old Balaam to come curse Israel. Is that right? Uh-huh. But Abraham brought forth the royal seed, brought forth the seed of the promise. Enoch went to glory in a rapture. Well, that's our type. He just took a walk and went home. He never through the tribulation period, you see. There you are, see. It does. The Bible cannot, it, he said, buy a type, and the types can't fail, see. It does not predict the bride. Now the church will go through the tribulation period. But the bride can't because it's already redeemed. Praise the Lord. Well, can you say I'm one of them? And, and really mean it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. I know my name was put on that book. And God, I mean, he's thinking. He can't lose me. He's not lost any of his thoughts. I'm still there. I'm right with him all the time. Oh, you say, well, you're down here. Yeah, but he didn't lose the thought of me. That thought is still in his mind. Amen. My goodness, if we could only believe what God has done. I mean, really, really, really believe it. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, people think this is such a complicated thing, but it's not. It's such a simple thing. It's so simple that if you can believe that you were in his thinking before the foundation, Lord, there's no way that you can be put out of his thinking, Lord, that your name was put on that book and there's nothing can rub it out. You've got eternal life. That means that you've got a life that never never began and never can end. You're eternal, just as the eternal, as the eternal God. You're just part of that. If the people could only see that and believe that. And then it would cause them to live the word, to be the living word of God, Lord. The Holy Spirit would be in charge. He would be your headship. He would lead you and guide you and reveal to you and use you for the kingdom, Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for all these things. We thank you for the absolute truth that you would give us this day. We love it. We love you. We appreciate it. We're so glad to be one of them, Lord. And oh, Lord, I pray that you will still lead us and guide us and keep us. We give you all the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.